Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. It is December, and uh, this is our final episode of uh, 2021. Um, we're going to wrap it up with uh, part two of our discussion on fertility management strategies for 2022. On our last episode, I was joined by Dr. Dave Hooker from the University of Guelph to discuss the most economical rate of nitrogen for 2022, or MERN for short. And uh, Dr. Hooker is back with me again for round two to share some P&K strategies, as well as a bunch of other nitrogen considerations. Um, Hi, Dave. Hey, thanks again for joining me on The Corn School. Hey, this is awesome to be here. I'm I'm glad to be here, Bern. Well, hey, we've uh, it's been a big year, a long year, and you're going to wrap it up today. So that's great to, uh, again to have you. Hey, let's let's start it off um, with uh, P and K starter in corn. Um, you've uh, always got some great numbers on where that fits, and and certainly the role that soil test plays here, and whether you're going to get value or not in P and K in the starter. Yeah, so I've been talking about this long-term P&K fertility project for several years now. And one of the things that I, reasons why I really like that study is because it's just a, a, an awesome, robust data set. And I think a lot of growers can use a lot of this information and very timely information as well. With the prices of fertilizer the way they are today, uh, really, we cannot afford mistakes of under-application and over-application also costs us money. And so last time we talked about nitrogen fertilizer a little bit, and we're going to be talking about it a little bit more today, um, I understand. Um, but for P and K, um, in our trials, and so we looked at corn, soybean, and wheat and their response to different uh, P and K management strategies. And I have one slide here that I'd like to show you. And when we look at low testing um strips in our long-term P and K trials. We have strips that are fairly low in P and K, so less than 20 parts per million phosphorus and 120 parts per million um, potassium. And in those strips, um, and across 28 site years that we have, um, our average corn yield is 100, was 155 bushel per acre. But when we applied based on roughly soil test recommendations, our yield went from 155 bushel per acre all the way up to 186 bushel per acre. So that's over 30 bushel per acre. And that easily paid for that starter fertilizer. And so when soil tests are relatively low, we need to pay attention and at least uh, apply our P and K fertilizers uh, based on the soil tests and preferably in a two by two band. Now, Dave, how do starter P and K sufficiencies relate to nitrogen? Yeah, very interesting. So we didn't do nitrogen in this study, so we didn't have another variable where we looked at various nitrogen rates. But other studies have looked at that. And then so some research out of the U.S. showed that, clearly showed that when potassium is deficient in the corn, in the corn crop, um, the nitrogen use deficiency drops. And so the yields are basically plateaued with a lower rate of nitrogen. So the maximum or most economic rate of nitrogen is actually lower where potassium, when potassium is deficient. So when we want the most out of our nitrogen dollar, we also need to bring in um, uh, potassium, our, our potassium sufficiency. So we need to fertilize according to whatever the soil test recommends um, according to our potash levels in our soil. Let's talk about um, split nitrogen applications, Dave. Um, is this going to be a good year for splits? And, uh, you know, obviously being able to get something down early and then coming back later in the season. What's, what's, what's your approach to split in this year? So um, 
a lot of good research. Actually, Greg Stewart has done quite a bit of research in this area. And so he recommends, and the general recommendation is to put between 30 and 50 pounds of the acre of nitrogen on at planting, and preferably like um, either close to the row or uh, a combination with a in a two by two starter. And so that is um, quite a key, I think, to consistent high corn yields. Now, this doesn't always work. I mean, in terms of always work, always give you a yield response because nitrogen is very complex. And really, we need a lot of trials, a lot of side-by-sides, a lot of on-farm trials to really fine-tune our rec- nitrogen recommendation. So it doesn't work all the time. And that's just the way that nitrogen management is. But if we apply 30 to 50 pounds per acre of nitrogen close to the crop row at planting, that will ensure um, – top yield potential. So that is part of a good recommendation strategy. Now, the other piece of this, of course, with expensive fertilizer prices is the concept of split applying nitrogen. And there's been a lot of talk, you know, if we split apply nitrogen, we're applying more nitrogen a little bit later in development. That means that, you know, maybe we would see less losses or a reduced amount of nitrogen that is lost to the environment because uh, otherwise, if we apply all of our nitrogen on at planting, uh, we might see some losses by the time the corn plant takes it up. So that is one advantage of split applying nitrogen. We can reduce our losses a little bit. But I think the biggest strategy here, and it's after many trials that we looked at, um, that are looked at across North America, is that when we split apply, it provides that split, that last split, uh, uh, gives us the opportunity to fine tune our nitrogen rates. So not only maybe it would take into account nitrogen losses that have occurred have occurred before planting, but we can you know assess the corn yield potential better at let's say at V6 or even later at even at V10 or V12 timing, uh, but we can also assess the amount of losses that have occurred um, as well, and then adjust or adjust our nitrogen rate um, with that last split application. So I think that is the biggest potential for the split application is that fine tuning of that nitrogen rate um, uh, since planting. Mm. Dave, question on nitrogen uptake in the plant. I mean, in that split, in that late season, when does the plant need that nitrogen the most? And obviously, when might be the best timing if conditions are optimal? Right. So the greatest um, or the The start of the peak nitrogen demand of the plant is around the V6 timing. And so if you could bracket, you know, when nitrogen is taken up most in the plant, it's between V8 and VT. The corn plant takes up 50% of its nitrogen between V8 and VT. And so naturally, just like the critical period of weed control, right, I would consider that the critical period of nitrogen management um, as well. And so I would want to apply If I had to pick a timing, it would be um, applying a part of the nitrogen at planting, you know, that 30 to 50 pounds, and then applying the balance between V8 and uh, and VT. And so I think that is um, that would represent an ideal timing for that late split application between V8 and VT. Um, question on stress. You mentioned, obviously, you've got to keep your eye on this crop as, as you're going through the season. Ev- evaluate, you know, a yield potential. Watch your definition of stress and backing off uh, nitrogen in that, that, that second split. Yeah, so the definition of stress, of course, is any any response that the plant reduces that that actual yield so anything that reduces plant growth or plant performance that would be a stress that causes that and so we need to be aware of the stresses that the plants are going through like it depends of course a lot on the timing of that stress when that stress will occur so in a corn plant um, the critical period for stress would really bracket like two weeks on either side of soaking. That would represent the most stress um, critical period in a corn crop. So if we want to time our nitrogen according to what the plant stresses, um, what the plant sees in terms of stress, really we need to pl- uh, time that last split of nitrogen application um, close to that 
two week bracket or that four week bracket, a uh, two weeks on either side of soaking. We need to time our last split fairly close to that so we can get an idea whether that corn plant will be stressed or not. And I'm speaking mainly from a moisture stress uh, standpoint. Hey, final question, Dave, and that is I think we're going to hear a lot of conversations this winter about nitrogen inhibitors and stabilizers to help, you know, right. r- reduce uh, uh, the amount of N that's lost in the environment. Where do they fit into growers for growers in 2022? Exactly. Well, well, I think not only do we have to pay attention to uh, to nitrogen rate and the timing of, of application, but we need to be aware that losses do occur. They can occur in the system, and that's where these stabilizers come into play or can act. So if, um, like, I'm a, I'm a grower as well, and so I know my fields, I know some fields are, are more susceptible to losses than others. And so if I was on a sandy field, and I was applying, I wanted to apply a lot of my nitrogen on the early side, I would be. I would need to be aware of leaching. That would be my number one loss. And of course, if I was on a clay soil, in the same scenario, denitrification would be my number one loss factor there. So I would use the stabilizers as a strategy. And so if I, was, if I preferred to put most of my nitrogen on early, and I was in a situation where loss potential was high, uh, like on a sand or on a clay. And if these were poorly, if the clay was poorly drained, I would be more, um, I would, I would tend to purchase a nitrogen stabilizer in that situation. Um, more so than if I was on a loam soil and I did not, or the loss potential was fairly low, let's say on a loam soil. So where, where the loss situation, where the loss potential is high, I would tend to um, be in, more interested in a stabilizer situation if I was to apply um, nitrogen on these loss potential soils, and also if I was to apply early my nitrogen relatively early in the developmental phases. Well, Dave, hey, as usual, some great insights on the Corn School. Want to thank you again for stopping by. It's been a great 2021. Uh, looking forward to having you back in 2022. Yeah, thanks for the invite, and what a fantastic topic, and I'm really looking forward to, forward to the discussion. Awesome, Dave. Uh, we'll see you All in right. the new year. All right, thanks. You too. Take care. <laughs>